today we'll start the discussion of pathology and starting with my favorite topic immunity of course one of the difficult areas in pathology have taken a online lecture 3 years ago we have done lot of modifications based on the recent uh, recommendations okay. we'll start with uh, immunity it is not so clear okay is one uh, in between some photographs will come we have it that thing may not be related with immunity okay. so can you identify the lesion just to break the monotonous in every chapter i will have to go into the some pictures what is the appearance of the tongue strawberry tongue where will you get strawberry tongue strawberry tongue is a feature of Kawasaki disease. So, now the features of Kawasaki disease. So, for every chapter, we start with the pre-test. We are it just options will be true or false. So, these pre-test questions are being tailored to be difficult. Good morning, yes, online too. Yeah. So, helper T cell subsets are Th1 and Th2. So, true or false? A partially true. So I actually love wrong answers at this point of time. If you know everything, what's my role then? In the sense, the first answer is wrong. So TH1 dominates in type 1 hypersensitivity reaction, true or false? Okay. Antibody secretion is an exclusive function of B cells, true or false? NK cells express receptor for antibodies, true or false? True. Macrophages have or express MHC class 2, true or false? All in kids, we are also supposed to answer these pre-test questions. Okay. IL-1 pro is produced by helper T cells, true or false? Please don't worry if you don't come up with right answers at this point of time. Transthyretin gets deposited in amyloidosis associated with hemodialysis, true or false. Rectal biopsy is the gold standard investigation in amyloidosis. So the answer for this was different uh, three years ago, now it is different. Okay. Anti-topo isomerase antibodies are associated with high risk of lupus nephritis, true or false. GVHT, graft versus host disease can also happen following blood transfusion, true or false. Hyperacute graft rejection as a form of type 2 hypersensitive rejection. Uh, online kids, are you with me? I don't get it. I don't see any of the answers from you. We should give. True, 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 like that. Will be very, yes, come into the discussion. Sharda, online, reach out the, online class reach out the students. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Okay, fine. Okay, so coming to the discussion, so there are two important cells of adaptive system. So we basically classify immunity into, into innate and adaptive. So what are the components of innate immunity? Again, there is a recent additions into this topic. Innate immunity, what is the basic difference between innate immunity and adaptive immunity? Yeah, so it's natural immunity. It is always there. It is always ready to attack. So how it's inferior to adaptive immunity is, it is though it is always ready, it is little less specific, little less effective when compared with the adaptive immunity. Right. So what are the components of innate immunity? What is always there? What is always there, there to protect us? What are they? Surface epithelia of the entire system, surface epithelia and the secretions, right? And then your cells, natural killer cells, your macrophages, monocytes, neutrophils, so all these cells. And then your major serum proteins, which serum proteins? It is always there in the protein, it is ready to attack. The complement system, the complement proteins, the C reactive proteins, the recent additions are the surfactant, C reactive proteins are recent additions. 
so all these are part of your all the part of your innate immunity so coming to adaptive immunity which is the master the most dominating adaptive immunity a part of immune system is, is dominated by t and b lymphocytes so this b lymphocytes they are very simple in the function in the family they are very simple nothing much to mention about them but t lymphocytes are much more complex and they really dominate the immune system so t cell subsets includes your helper t cells the cytotoxic t cells and some textbooks including harris in the last edition have given regulatory cells under helper t cells but now, but actually this is the better way of classifying it it has helper t cells cytotoxic t cells and regulatory t cells so coming to the subsets of helper t cells again uh, one of the high yield areas of immunity So it's Th1, Th2. Anything else you'd like to add? The third category is recent, not recently added, at least a decade ago. It's Th17. So how do they divide their? <coughs> how do they divide their function as? Like how many types of hypersensitive reactions are there? From the pathologist's aspect, it's four. Actually, you know, it has become five. Past five six years, microbiologists deal with it very detail. After type one, type two, one form of type two has become type five hypersensitive reaction. So in this type one is due to what is type one? Uh, type one is allergic. So the usual mnemonic is acid. A for type one is A. A for atopy, allergy, anaphylaxis. Type two is C. C for cytotoxic antibodies. Type three is I. I for good immune complex mediator. And type four is B. B for delayed type hypersensitivity. And uh, tell me, among these four hypersensitive reactions, which uh, what is the similarity between type one and type four, and type two and type three? Yeah, that, that's about individual reactions. How type one and type two? What is it? What is common between type one and type four? And what is common between type two and type three? Are you with me? Online test. What is the similarity? You can you can just you can come up with that itself. Yes, type two and type three are antibody mediated. Then type one and type four are cell mediated. Okay, so that's the basic uh, similarity between type one and four and two and three. Okay, so in cell uh, type one and type four are cell mediated. So then they divide. Let type one be taken care of by one is never for one. So let let uh, type one be taken care of by Th2 response and type two hyper type four hypersensitivity be taken care of by Th1 subtype. Clear? So, type basically type one and type four hypersensitive reactions are cell mediated. So, how they divide their functions is like this. So, Th one will take care of type four hypersensitive reaction, and Th two will take care of type one hypersensitive reaction. This is not just theoretical. You have to apply this in quite a lot of areas in systemic pathology. Okay. And okay. third subset is Th seventeen. So, what are the Th seventeen associated with? So this TH17 is it's a very powerful. It is a, this with its associated cytokines. It's a very powerful recruiter of monocytes and neutrophils. So it it the function of TH17 is to recruit excessive and intense and prolonged infiltration of monocytes and neutrophils. When do you require, or when will there be excessive infiltration of Inflammatory cells. When will there be excessive infiltration of inflammatory cells? In infection, inflammatory there will be inflammation, inflammatory cells. When will there be excessive inflammatory cells? When will there be marked neutrophilia, marked monocytosis? And there is severe, very good sepsis. So sepsis, and then uh, when will there be continuous infiltration of inflammatory cells? In normal people. When there is any infection injury, there will be infiltration of inflammatory cells. So when the healing and repair happens, inflammatory cells get cleared off. 